What's up YouTube, this is the Kibo Warrior here and we are back with another Tekken 8 video. Today I'm gonna do a tier list that would include Eddie and would be based on the latest patch. So before we start off with the tier list, I just need to address a few stuff. The tier list would be based on my opinion and how I personally feel these characters would be ranked in the tier list. Of course, it does not necessarily mean that you would have the same opinion. If your opinion is different than mine, just go ahead and comment, alright? Just tell me if I'm wrong and if you feel differently. However, try not to be toxic because opinions differ. Like, you might have a different opinion, I would respect that and I want you to respect my opinion as well, alright? And you also need to know that skill beats tier list any day. A skilled user using a bottom tier character would still be able to go ahead and win tournaments. Like for example, we saw Rangshu winning a tournament with Panda. And we all know, we all know that Panda is regarded bottom tier, right? Just because some character is in the D tier does not necessarily mean that they are horrible and you shouldn't play with them. You can. It's just that the characters who are a tier above are just a little bit better than the other characters, okay? So, just keep that in mind, okay? So without wasting any time, let's start off with the tier list. The first one would be Jack, and he really did seem OP when the game first launched, alright? But slowly, when people started, you know, adjusting with his new moveset, uh, he does not look that strong at the moment so probably I would probably uh, put him in B tier he's not uh, A or S tier strong and he's not D tier weak so I just put him B tier okay Jean is such a popular character in Tekken 8 and most of the new players are using him but there are so many Jin players online that you get to learn the matchup so easily and he was probably eight here you know at the beginning but right now he doesn't feel so strong so I would put him in the B tier he, he's definitely a very good character and if you have the right skill right amount of practice if you know all his you know frame traps and everything you will be able to do very well with him but obviously as I said, skill beats tier list any day. We know Devilstar, right? One of the best Jin players in the world. And if you've seen how he plays Jin, so if you want to play like that, you need skill for that. Just because he is so good at the game does not mean that Jin is S tier. Yeah, I hope you understand what I'm saying. He is good with the character. He's a character specialist. That's why he makes Jin look OP. But Overall, if you ask me, Jean is probably B tier. Alright. Jun is going to be our first S tier character. She had always been S tier from the beginning. It's because her poking is so good in this game. She has great damage, great poking. She's, she's basically a final boss when she's in heat. One of the best heat moves in the game. One of the best punishers in the game overall she has very little weakness so for me she's s tier now kazia is one of the toughest characters in the roster at the moment and if you want to be really good with him you need to be very skilled at the game so he is don't don't get me wrong okay kazia is a solid character but the amount of execution you need for this character to be, you know, that effective at higher levels is too high. Alright, the execution requirement for this character is too high. Which is why I wouldn't consider Kazuya a top tier character. But I have seen monster Kazuya players out there, but they're probably veterans and they are you know playing the game for a long time and it's basically the user's skill that makes this character really strong so 
people would know how much Kazuya struggles after blue ranks. Maybe because his game plan is so straightforward that it becomes very obvious for the opponent at times. Alright, so the next all right, next we have is King and we all know how annoying this character is. The only reason I'm not putting him in S tier is that he's been there for a long time, right? King is one of the legacy characters and we have seen so many King players over the years that you basically know what they're gonna do, right? When Tekken 8 started, you know, King with his new heat moves and everything was a menace to deal with. But people slowly started adjusting to his game plan. And right now, he's still 8 here, maybe top 8 here, alright? Maybe top 10 even. But I don't personally see him as an S tier character. Alright? Next up is Lars. And Lars is a very interesting character. Now, I know you find Lars players online who just don't seem to stop. Like, they keep on pressing, 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 pressing. And if you know the matchup, you know that most of his stance moves are pokeable. Like, when he transitions into from one stance into another, you can poke him. Yeah? But what we normally do when we don't know the matchup is that we start respecting the character way too much. There's one character that you don't want to respect. Yeah, that's that's how it is. Lars players, they have no chill. Okay, so the character is very strong if you don't know the matchup. If you know the matchup, you know his weaknesses. But is he a weak character? Definitely not. I think he's better than Kazuya. But yeah, beat here for me. Next up we have Law, and this is very confusing. Law is a very very strong character in Tekken 8, especially because they made DSS so easy that people are going crazy online with this character. Like DSS, DSS, plus frames, forward 1 plus 2, you know, DSS 2, slide, and all those crazy mix-ups, you know. His damage is good, his DSS mix-ups are crazy and having a power crush from DSS really helps him if you find someone who's constantly poking you. So, yep, definitely a very, very strong character. But is he 8 here though? I think no. No, if you can predict his slides, it's just the slide. You just don't know when he does it and it instantly changes sides and he gets a follow-up one plus two so overall i don't think he's eight years strong is he stronger than king no way i don't think so all right next we have is paul his buddy and he would also be in the b tier now Paul is a very strong character, okay? He has two guard breaks in heat mode, and if you can use him well enough, he's a monster. However, his game plan is so straightforward, like Kazuya, that it becomes very obvious for the opponent. You know, like, compare these two characters, okay? I'm not doing a tournament tier list, alright? This is not a tier list for tournaments, okay? This is not the absolute highest level pro level tier list. This is a tier list where average players, new players and good players can relate to. Okay. Consider these two characters, Lars and Paul. Do you feel that the game plan for Paul is as crazy as Lars? I don't think so. Paul is more straightforward. Yeah. And if you ask me, he takes more skill than Lars. So, overall, I think he's beat here. Alright, next up we have Nina and she's gonna be another rest here. Now, Nina is probably the newest addition to the S tier. It's only because of how crazy her mix-ups are. She has, she's great from the neutral. 
All right, 50-50 from the neutral. She has insane 50-50 mix-ups. She has a throw game. She She's probably one of those characters that can keep you under pressure for the entire set. Yeah, just killed enough. You could do all the difficult stuff with her. And even if you are new to the game, you can still win a lot with Nina. All right, because some of her basic fun, you know, fundamental tools, they're just too easy. Okay, but I'm not saying Nina is an easy character, but if you ask me overall, she has a difficult, she has a difficult side, she has an easy side as well, and both of them would reward you almost equally. Okay, S tier. Next in line would be Shayu, and I hate this character. There's no doubt one of the most broken characters ever created by Tekken and in Tekken A with all the heat and everything she, she's she's just downright broken okay she needs a fix her butterfly stance goes under mids and I have a video which showed that it even went under a low attack and that is saying something even the pro players they say she's broken there's just no other place I can put her. Asuka is gonna be C tier. I consider her a little brain dead. And you know, Asuka mains would probably be hating on me in the comment section. But to be honest, this character was really good in Tekken 7. But in Tekken 8, I don't think she's as strong as she was. Right? And Basically, her game plan is very simple, nothing too crazy, right? Whatever she does, you can have a counter to that. And I don't think she is stronger than these guys. So whenever you're doing a tier list, you're checking the characters that you have in one tier is stronger than the characters in the other tier. So is Asuka stronger than these characters? I, I don't think so. So that's why C tier. Okay, next we have is Leroy. And honestly, he's one of the worst characters in the game at the moment. They keep nerfing him for no reason. I don't know why. He was pretty pretty strong S tier in Tekken 7. But, but in Tekken 8, he's just not that good. All right. His Hermit stance does give you several options. But it's pokeable unless you do the parry annoying parry but overall if you ask me Leroy is quite unsafe and very easy to punish so bottom tier next up we have Lily and she would probably be in the high B tier Lily is a very strong character okay if you don't know the matchup she's gonna obliterate you there's no chance you can beat a good Lily player if you don't know her moves, her matchup. She is pretty, pretty strong, okay? Stronger than these ones over here. But overall, she has some weaknesses, a little unsafe, but she definitely has oh, one of the better mix-up games out there. Warang is a character who struggles a lot at higher levels, but is godlike at the lower levels, right? If you're talking about pressure, this guy is a monster, okay? The total number of plus frames that he has is insane. It's, he's just right next to Dragunov, all right? But there is a catch. He is extremely weak to sidesteps. And if you ask me, he has the worst heat smash in the game. His heat move, there's nothing special about him when he's in heat other than the fact that he gets a counter it low but then you know that's the only thing he has and he would probably be going for it right and if you block it he's going for a launch Orang in heat I don't think he's a threat okay the rest of the roster they have something special about them when they're in heat mode but Orang no there's nothing special about this guy when he's in heat the only thing is that he gets a counter hit from his low attack. Other than that, he is 
strong enough but not definitely not stronger than stronger than law i guess yeah but definitely not stronger than these guys claudio is not as strong as he was in tekken 7 so i would put him in the seat here even though his back one is extremely good his superman punch is good but it's a high so you can punish it but he does have a 50 50 from there like if he's doing too many superman punches you could just duck but he has a mid as well so he can catch you off guard but overall i don't think he's that good his hop kick is really nice though but again not better than these characters up there Ryan is definitely one of the most difficult characters to play you're skilled enough to use this character with its maximum potential it would probably be here right but then you need to be that skilled all right and that is saying something like his taunt jetaba is undoubtedly the toughest move in the game anything with brian is tough okay he's just not your everyday character where you have a straightforward launcher a straightforward combo everything for everything you just need so much execution with this guy but if you can do it this guy is so strong he's stronger than what he was in tekken 7 he has a great wall combo insane damage is this guy is crazy with walls you know there's no one better at the wall than brian next up we have victor i'll be honest when we started with tekken 8 victor was very very overpowered all right there, there was no answer to him and these victor players they reached blue and purple ranks in no time now people know his matchup and they know what to do all right he's very weak to sidesteps very linear character even though his health sweep is good but it's reactable and most of the victors they follow the same game plan okay i don't think he's a threat but he still is a solid character maybe better than the ones we have in beat here so i'll put him in a All right, Azucena is S tier even with her nerf, her while running 3-2 nerf. She has a lot of frame traps, and if you don't know the matchup, you're probably gonna struggle against Azucena. Next up, we have Raven, and Raven would be another A tier character. I've labbed this character, and I can understand why people say that he's A tier. Maybe a little unsafe, okay. People might feel he's a little unsafe, but trust me when I say this, his mix-ups are insane. He's gonna keep you wondering what he's gonna do next. You you would have no clue because number one, he's one of the rarest characters. Okay, you won't see many people pick him. He generally has a lot of insane mix-ups. I don't think there is a reason why he shouldn't be considered eight here. For me at least he's a tier at the moment better than these characters definitely way better than these characters next up eddie and if you ask me this guy is a very high risk high reward type of character again he's like if you know the matchup you can steamroll this guy if you don't he's gonna steamroll you okay i recently made a video about how you can defend Eddie in Tekken 8. If you actually see on paper, he's a very weak character, extremely weak character. Like there's nothing going for him, okay? He does have a few plus frame and you know, a few nice moves. He does have a few nice moves, plus frames, fine. But there's nothing going for him. He's pokeable, his, you know, his strings are interruptible. There is nothing overpowered about this guy the only reason people feel that he is super super duper strong is the fact that he is new at the moment he's a legacy character 
but he's still new in Tekken 8 and people are still trying to adjust to his new moves, his new game plan, right? That's why he feels overpowered. Is he as good as the characters in the S or A tier? I don't think so, but it's definitely up there. Probably high B tier, yeah. Yep, that's his proper place. He's a mid tier guy, okay? Don't don't get me wrong. You might be obliterated by an Eddie online. That is only because you had no clue what he was doing, okay? But once you understand his move, once you start labbing this character, and I know if you don't buy him, you can't, you don't get to lab him, and it's unfair. But that is not how we decide the tier list, right? So if you lab him, you would know his weaknesses, okay? Dragunov is undoubtedly still broken. I don't know. I don't understand the concept behind making this character so overpowered. His new hell sweep that is down back 3 plus 4 that is ridiculously overpowered. His while running move is the strongest in the game while running 2. And if you get launched it goes for a full combo for almost say 90 plus damage. His overall damage output is insane. His plus frames are insane. His character is basically broken. He has a full throw game. He has a 1 plus 2 break. He has a 2 break throw. And he has a 1 break throw. So he has a full throw game. Okay. He has an unblockable throw. Which is reactable. But it's still unblockable at the end of the day. Also he has one of the best low pokes in the game. Is down to which can again create another 50-50 situation where you can go for a wild rising 2 or a wild crouching 1-4 so there's no answer to him still now like we are you're playing this game for almost three months now and there's still no answer to this character right so yeah kuma is probably gonna be beat here i mean he's good only because people don't know the matchup. If you're picking up Kuma, you'd probably get a lot of wins and you feel that he's probably S tier, but actually not. But that is not why you're winning with Kuma. You're basically winning because he is a very, very rare character. Rare pick. Don't People don't play him much. And it's very difficult to understand if he's going for a low or a mid when he's sitting down. Right? You don't really know what he's gonna do. Oh, like his his body type is such that his hitbox is all messed up. I remember playing this Kuma and I couldn't, you know, get a combo on him, which I would normally get on the other characters. And it's just because of his hitbox. So, keeping all that aside, if you know the matchup, Kuma isn't that big of a deal. Don't get me wrong, this is the best he has ever been. And that's why he's in B tier. Otherwise, he would probably be another bottom tier character all right next up we have leo and leo is a b tier character yeah the reason why leo is gonna be in b tier is simply because way too linear very easily sidesteppable even though he probably has like the best combo damage in the game like simple launches can go up to 100 damage his bok 2 launch that's his down 1 plus 2 2 launch easily goes for 100 plus All right combo damage excellent mix up excellent he has an extremely good health sweep but the only thing with leo is that he is so weak to sidesteps. Leo is a pretty solid character, to be honest. I don't think he's gonna go above mid tier. There's a lot of things lacking, especially 1 4 transitioning into a guaranteed stance often lets him down because you might wanna time your punish, but if you miss it, you're gonna get launched. Okay, Shaheen is, I feel this character is extremely boring, but he's not bad. And in fact, he's really good. I had been labbing him for a while now. And this guy is insane. 
come across some decent Shaheen players and I could understand why he is so good. Of course he's rare so people really don't know the matchup that well but overall he has the tools that would take him up to 8 here and he's a solid character better than what he was in Tekken 7 all right Steve is no longer Steve okay arguably one of the worst characters in the game but is he worse than Leroy I don't know could be but I, I never have a problem with Steve he's so weak in the game even though he has the best counter aid move one of the best punishes in the game but his overall kit is bad okay he in Tekken 7 in Tekken 7 he was a monster in Tekken 8 he's I don't know is something wrong with his stance man uh, they, they need to go ahead and buff this guy for for real this isn't the Steve we know All right Yoshi is gonna be another 8 tier character very hard to play so many setups so many flowcharts that it often becomes overwhelming for the user but if you can adjust to his flowcharts adjust to the wide range of moves that he has Yoshi is a great character 8 tier no doubt Bang is probably gonna be S tier is arguably one of the best characters in the game and is he broken I don't think so is Shayu broken yes is Dragonov broken yes is Feng broken I don't think so the reason is he's good okay everything is going for him he has the frames he has the best poking in the game the best frames the best heat move in the game the best he heat burst the best heat smash you know everything everything he has it okay but I could I would still say he's not broken okay not as broken probably not as broken as Dragonov and Shayu but he's good like he's right up there we have Panda and he's probably gonna be D tier now Kuma and Panda they probably have the same moves but the only difference is is when they're in heat in heat Kuma is a lot better and we know how heat driven Tekken 8 really is so that's why I'm gonna put Panda in D tier okay next up we have Elisa uh, she would probably be A tier I know she's annoying to deal with but she's strong she is strong her chainsaw is so broken you know all plus frames she abuses that every every Elisa player I see them abuse her chainsaw moves but overall she is really strong better than the characters down here next up is Devil Jane and probably the best character in heat mode I would have put him in S tier but I guess he has come down just a little bit because of the fact that people now can adjust to his game plan his flowcharts and people know what to do when he's in heat mode so yeah other than that he has he's extremely strong though so I would still put him in 8 here high 8 here Lee is I don't know people are really sleeping on this guy all right hear me out Lee is the strongest he has ever been okay you can't compare Tekken 7 Lee with this one Tekken 8 Lee is way better all right this guy trust me I have the most difficult time playing this guy this is perhaps the most difficult matchup for me for Lee it's like you know there is an opening okay but if you try to punish him he's gonna punish you back that's how crazy this character is if on the uh, if, if there's a skilled user all right if someone knows how to use this guy to its full potential again he's one of the hardest characters in the game he's definitely one of the best as well all right provided you you can't bypass that execution gap and you can 
use this guy to his full potential. He's he's perhaps the king of mix-ups, right? The the 50-50 king. Reyna is gonna be eight here. The reason is simple. She's dropped down as people started to understand her flowcharts. They know when to poke her. They know when to respect the character. They know when to duck. So she's she is a threat. I'm not saying that. She is not as big of a threat as she was at the beginning of the game. All right. So that's why I'm gonna put her in eight here. And Zafina, we all know, is one of the worst characters in the game at the moment. They nerfed her a lot. In Tekken 7, she was probably top tier, but in Tekken 8, I don't see her anywhere close to being top tier. I know Sonic Fox was saying that she's the hidden top tier character, but I don't think so. And he was proven wrong, so that's how it is. Time for some adjustments. Let's see. Mm -hmm. I think Lee is better than Rena at the moment. I think everything looks fine. I think yes. I think it's fine. Yeah. These are the bottom four. Yeah. I think this is gonna be the final list. Yeah. So there you go. That's the Tekken 8 tier list after the Eddie patch for the month of April. I would probably doing another one later on. I hope you like this video. If you did go ahead and hit that like button if you're new to the channel go ahead and hit subscribe I'm trying to do this for a living so help this channel grow okay thanks so much for watching and I'll see you again in the next one